you had was how is genetic counseling important for Pompeii disease and what role do we play within the clinic for patients? Um, and one of the things that I've talked about at this meeting is thinking about the family structure when we're testing um, the proband or the child that comes to attention or the adult that comes to attention for the diagnosis of Pompeii disease. Because what we've seen is the incidence of Pompeii disease is actually um, increasing over time because in the past we've said it's about one in 40,000 but with newborn screening we're seeing those numbers change. So we're seeing from the Missouri newborn screening data that those numbers are closer to maybe one in 14,000 instead of one in 40,000. So in that we know that there's a number of patients that we're missing in diagnosis. So one thing that we've seen recently with at least two or three families that we followed in clinic is that we have diagnosed um, a child with Pompeii disease, the infantile form of the disease, and then through a series of events, diagnosed other people in the immediate family also with Pompeii disease. So one example is a two-year-old who was diagnosed with Pompeii disease, the infantile form. Um, the, both of the parents were then sequenced to look for their genetic changes to make sure that um, we didn't have any concern for the other kids in the family. And in doing that, the mom was diagnosed with late onset Pompeii disease. So what had happened is that the dad had an infantile mutation, genetic change. The mom had an infantile mutation and a late onset mutation. The mom and the dad both passed the infantile mutations on to the child. So the baby, the, two, the one and a half or two year old had infantile onset Pompeii. The mom has one of the mutations that the child has, but also another late onset mutation. So she has late onset Pompeii. But the other thing you have to think about is they had four other children. So the four other children have lots of different chances of inheriting either neither change, um, but they are always gonna be carriers because the mom has one infantile change and one late onset change. So two of the other children in the family actually have late onset Pompeii. The one baby has infantile onset Pompeii and the mom has late onset Pompeii. So where in the past we would have said that's very rare and probably, you know, it's been reported in the literature, but it's very unlikely. We have seen a few examples of that. So it's really important for a genetic counselor to kind of think about the family structure and to think about the family and to ask very specific and important questions about the other children and about both parents as we look at the first degree relatives of a patient with Pompeii disease.